now on 18 News. New this morning, open gunfire ruins yet another high school event and leaves two injured. More on this upcoming story. And Mayor de, Mayor de Blasio pulls out of the 2020 presidential election. His explanation as well as Trump's reaction. This is the Park Church in Elmira, New York. I'm J.D. Isles, and this is Quick History with Hidden Landmarks. The time has come. Get ready for the fourth installation of the original broadcast series, Hidden Landmarks, with our host, J.D. Isles. It's coming up soon. Live from your local news leader, this is 18 News Today. Good Saturday morning, Twin Tears. I'm Alexis Bellamy. Today is Saturday, September 21st. I'm Austin Evans. Thank you for joining us for 18 News Today and waking up so with us. I have a question. Is It's officially fall, right? No, it's no, not yet. Okay. Yeah. For some reason, Google thinks fall starts on September 1st. Yeah. Because I've been like looking up how many days it's That's fall what I was thinking. I don't like doing math in the mornings. And the weather has been kind of like summer. still. Yeah. Yeah. We're, so I'm we're optimistic. Gonna have, we're going to have a warm end to summer. Okay. And it's actually going to be a warm start to fall, but for now, 54 degrees in Elmira. Winds out of the west southwest have picked up a little bit at 8 miles per hour, and it is a foggy one this morning. That wind might help push some of the fog out, but you can see in several areas Elmira, Corning, Tioga, PA, and Wellsboro all at zero miles for visibility. So be mindful of that this morning when doing any Saturday morning runs. Eight miles in Spencer. Five miles in Watkins Glen and temperatures across the region. We are pushing into the mid 50s this morning. 53 in Sarah, 54 in Elmira and Corning, like I said, 52 in Watkins Glen, 46 mid 40s in Spencer. And the radar, all that fog is below the radar scan, and we are completely clear. That's the way it's going to stay throughout the day. And over the next several hours, we're going to warm up very. Rapidly, once the sun starts coming out into the lower 80s for highs today, mainly clear, and I'll have all the details coming up in just a little bit. Two people were shot while attending a high school football game at Pencil in Pennsylvania last night. It happened shortly before 8 p.m. Friday evening in the Marcus Foster Stadium in Philadelphia. Simon Gratz High School was playing against Imhotep Carter High School when the shooting took place. So far, no word yet on what caused the gunfire. Both victims were taken to the hospital. The identities have yet to be released. All right, turning now to political news from your local election headquarters. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio is dropping out of the 2020 presidential race. The Democrat made the announcement on Friday saying, quote, I feel like I've contributed all I can to this primary election, and it's clearly not my time. De Blasio failed to resonate in the polls and was criticized for neglecting his duties as mayor to run for president. He also failed to qualify for the Democratic debate in September. Now de Blasio says he's going to continue his work as mayor of New York City and to keep speaking up for the people, for the working people. Getting out there, being able to hear people's concerns, address them with new ideas, has been an extraordinary experience. Mm -hmm. But I have to tell you at the same time, I, I feel like uh, I've contributed all I can to this primary election. And uh, it's clearly not my time, so I'm going to end my presidential campaign, mm. uh, continue my work as mayor of New York City, and I'm going to keep speaking up for working people and for a Democratic Party that stands for working people. President Trump seemed to take digs after de Blasio's withdrawal, calling him the part-time mayor of New York City and adding, quote, New York City is devastated. He's coming home. The president and first lady welcomed the prime minister of Australia and his wife to Friday night's White House state dinner. The two couples stopped to pose for pictures before heading to the dinner in the Rose Garden. The outdoor ceremony honored Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison and his wife Jennifer Morrison. Some notable attendees including Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, Attorney General William Barr and the President Counselor Rudy Giuliani. 
The dinner incorporated Australia's national colors of green and gold and will include musical performances from the U.S. military. This is the second state dinner for the Trump administration and the first state dinner this year. We have those stories and more along with all your local and national political news. Just go to your local election headquarters on our website, my20years.com. It seems like just as quickly as it started, summer came to its just as quick end, as well as did its, as, as well as did its festivities. Alive After Five is the free summer concert series put on by Elmira Downtown Development, happening at various downtown locations. Regularly featured part of our 18 news coverage, Friday night marked the final Alive After Five event for the season. 18 News' Jessica Camuto has more on Friday's festivities. Members of the community came out Friday evening to attend the final Alive After Five event of the summer that was held at Riverfront Park here in Elmira. It brings a lot to the community. Everybody's giving back. A lot of fun. And it makes the summer go very, probably too fast, but fun. Beautiful weather, fantastic bands, and good friends was a great way to end the last week of summer and welcome in the fall season. Although the weather cooperated most nights throughout these events, on the evenings when the skies were gray and we saw that rain, that did not stop the community from coming out. Very happy with it. It's been a huge success. It's even grown over the past couple years. This is one of the best, it is the best year that we've had. This summer has been amazing. The, the support that we've received, not only from our sponsors, from the community, each and every one you're witnessing faces that you, you haven't seen. So it's been a great time in downtown Elmira. With how much success and interest the community showed in the Alive After Five events this year, they plan on bringing this event back next year, bigger and better than ever. We're going to look at growing it even more next year, come up with some new ideas, expand it. And to see all these people in our downtown, it's so exciting right now. It's a great time. It really is. Now, as the mayor hinted, they are looking to add a few more events for the 2020 Alive After Five year. And if you were unable to make it this year, be on the lookout. Next year's schedule will be coming out in January. Just keep on supporting the downtown and the city of Elmira. We are witnessing such a beautiful renaissance right now. It's a great time to be and support your city, your hometown. Reporting in Elmira, Jessica Camino, 18 News. And what fun that was. If you missed it, you'll have time next time. Still to come on 18 News Today, prominent Democratic donor Ed Buck was federally charged on Thursday. We have those details surrounding the now disgraced politician's downward spiral when we get back. A beautiful and warm day to take your favorite four-legged friends outside, but always check pavement temperatures. It's actually going to be warm enough today for me to say that highs in the lower 80s with some passing high clouds. We'll be right back after this break. You're watching 18 News Today.
The Indiana Attorney General is opening his own investigation into an abortion doctor who kept thousands of fetuses at his home. Dr. Ulrich Klopper died earlier this month, and the remains were found by family in Klopper's garage. Attorney General Curtis Hill confirmed investigators have searched abandoned clinics in two areas of Illinois where Klopper practiced. No additional remains were found, but thousands of confidential medical records were recovered. Investigators are looking at those records to see if anyone may have helped the doctor transport the fetuses from the Indiana clinics to his home in Illinois. Lots of unanswered questions concerning the why, the how, the what, and we're going to continue the investigatory process to determine as best we can why this occurred and what the purpose was. Kloper's family is cooperating with the investigation. Now look at this. This is not the scene from the Blues Brothers where they drove the car through the busy mall, if you remember that. This is the real thing, and it is obviously extremely dangerous. A 22-year-old man drove his SUV through the Woodfield Mall in Schamburg, Illinois, on Friday. Police say he drove through a mall entrance and then drove around the mall inside. Two off-duty police officers detained the driver until police arrived. Now, luckily, no one was hit by the vehicle or even directly injured from it. A few people were treated at the scene, and three others were taken to the hospital for minor injuries, which they are expected to recover. The mall was closed down as police investigated. Police say the incident was not pre-planned by the man and may have been the result of a medical issue. Prominent Democratic donor Ed Buck was federally charged on Thursday. Prosecutors say Buck provided large doses of methamphetamine that resulted in the fatal overdoses of two men found dead in his West Hollywood home over an 18-month period. His federal arraignment came just a day after he was arrested on state charges, including administrating methamphetamine and operating a drug house out of his apartment. Stephanie Lame details Buck's downward spiral. We had so many naysayers tell us that we would never see this day, Ed Buck will never be arrested, and this is just a small step towards victory for my brother, for Timothy Dean. Wearing a blue suicide prevention smock, Ed Buck, a well-known Democratic donor, stood in court to face charges brought by the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office, including felony battery, administering methamphetamine, and maintaining a drug house. Narcotics paraphernalia found inside his apartment, including meth and 24 hypodermic needles, officials say. But Buck is now in federal custody, charged with providing methamphetamine that led to a man's death, the federal laws offering tougher sentences. The Los Angeles DA says a 37-year-old man was given a large dose of methamphetamine by Buck in Buck's apartment in early September. Fearing he was overdosing, the man, who was living with Buck at the time, left to get medical attention. But on September 11th, he received two more large doses of meth, also allegedly administered by Buck. The man eventually fled to a nearby gas station and called 911. The man did overdose, but survived. The surviving victim's statements gave us the break we needed. It gave legally sufficient evidence to establish the charge crimes and prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt in state court. We will fight this case vigorously, but I'm not so sure legitimately there was ever enough evidence to ever cause this case to be filed until recently. Arrest Ed Buck! The outrage surrounding Ed Buck has been boiling for years after two men died in his apartment in similar circumstances in less than 18 months. On July 27, 2017, Jamel Moore was found dead of an accidental meth overdose, but the DA's office, claiming insufficient evidence, declined to press charges. Timothy Dean also died in Buck's apartment on January 7th of this year, also of an accidental meth overdose. While it is Moore's death that is the crux of the federal charges against Buck, today the U.S. attorney revealed there are many more men that say they were victimized by him. Investigators have located 10 additional victims nine of whom said Mr. Buck administered drugs to them or strongly encouraged them to ingest narcotics as part of, ag of agreements to be compensated for sexual services. Handcuffed and slumped over in the back of a police cruiser, Buck was taken away outside of his West Hollywood apartment Tuesday. 
It's a strikingly different posture for the LGBTQ activist and prominent donor who's contributed more than $120,000 to Democratic heavyweights since the early 90s. That's according to the Center for Responsive Politics. For the past two years of 53 days, we had a lot of people telling us um, that nothing was ever going to happen to Ed Buck because he was this white gay man who had a lot of money and a lot of influence in Los Angeles. It's a sentiment others have long held, that Buck's power and privilege had kept him safe. But the DA pushes back on that. We have done, and we will continue to do, everything legally possible to put this depraved sexual predator away. The time is now 6.16 and still to come on 18 News today. As summer closes, so does Child Passenger Safety Week. I'll tell you more about the last day of this week long event, but first, Austin, you said it's going to be nice outside today. It will, it will be a nice day and it will be a nice end to summer, and you can know that by downloading the 18 Storm Team weather app. It's available on iOS and Android devices. A very nice day on the way, and I'll tell you all about it after the break. This weekend, we will finally be close, closing out summer, and it's going to be a really nice one to close it out with. Highs in the low 80s uh, for today and mid-80s for tomorrow, but first we have some valley fog early. And it's going to be a nice day today after we get through that. 54 degrees right now in Elmira. Winds it on the west-southwest at 8 miles per hour. It is a very foggy morning across the Twin Tiers, so just be careful if you are out making any Saturday morning runs. 53 in Sarah, 46, our lowest in Spencer, 52 in Watkins Glen. And like I said, today's high is going to be in the low 80s. It's going to be a really nice summer-like day, considering we are still in summer. That is to be expected. Finishing off summer very, very warm. On radar, we are completely clear. All that fog is well below the scans of the radar, and that's the way it's going to stay for much of today and a good portion of tomorrow as well. We're going to stay completely clear. We're going to see some passing upper level clouds, but nothing uh, to shake a stick at, really. Tomorrow, that's when the uh, clouds start to move in, and we could see some isolated shower chances, especially in the afternoon, pushing into the evening hours. But again, they clear out going into the actual start of fall on Monday. Today, high of 82, fog lifts out early, some high clouds. It'll be comfy and warm today. It will be a nice day today. It might push 
into the muggy category. I'll touch on that here in just a second. 61 degrees tonight, clouds increasing late tonight with, of course, some patchy valley fog, a very, very light wind tonight as well. And over the next seven days, you can see a very, very warm uh, weekend going into a warm start to fall. And this Saturday, I mentioned uh, we could push into the muggy category, and we should actually will push into the humid and very humid very briefly uh, for tomorrow with the isolated uh, shower chances. But we can see we drop back into the comfy category going into later this week. Tuesday, a passing cold front drops our temperatures uh, considerably down into the lower 70s with isolated showers possible. Wednesday, we stay in those low 70s uh, with cloudy conditions. We warm up a little bit going into late week. Today is Child Passenger Safety Week. The Governor's Traffic Safety Committee has hosted child safety events throughout the entire state. These events are meant to help parents ensure their child's restraint is properly installed and fitted correctly. And related to child vehicle safety in November of this year, a new law will take effect requiring all children under the age of two to be in a rear facing car seat. In connection to Child Safety Week, late last month, Walmart announced what is billed as the nation's largest car seat recycling effort. Walmart teamed up with the TerraCycle to host the recycling program at the retailer's nearly 4,000 locations. Customers could trade in used car seats for a $30 Walmart gift card. It was to run through September 30th, but due to an overwhelming response, on, to, on response, Walmart announced the program is ending as early as today. Now, the latest day, TerraCycle and Walmart say they have collected in a, an estimated 1 million car seats that will be turned into recyclable materials. Child Passenger Safety Week ends on today, and related to vehicle safety in November is a, the new law requiring all children under the age of two to be in that rear-facing car seat. The time is now 6.22, and still to come on 18 News Today, more news coming out of the retail giant Walmart, this time surrounding the vaping epidemic. We'll tell you more when we get back. The retail giant Walmart says it's not going to sell electronic cigarettes anymore. Walmart made that announcement on Friday as the number of deaths and illnesses related to vaping grows. The company says it's decided to act due to uncertainty surrounding how federal, state, and local governments may start to regulate the products. Walmart will continue selling the devices it currently has in inventory. 
The decision also applies to the company's Sam Club stores. And stay tuned. Austin is going to tell us more about how nice it is outside and how you can get out there and enjoy summer's last bit of sunshine. You're watching 18 News Today. Welcome back. Austin's going to give us one more look at the beautiful weather outside, and I'm just so excited about it. You know I love the sunshine. We argue about this all the time. Yep, every, every Saturday and Sunday morning. It'll be a nice day today, and it's going to be a warmer uh, start to fall on Monday. The official start of fall at 78 degrees. That's uh, quite a bit above average, but a cold front that comes through in the overnight hours Monday into Tuesday slashes those temperatures down into the lower 70s. Uh, if we're lucky, it's going to be really cloudy on Tuesday. Going into Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to warm up a little bit. Might see the upper 70s on Thursday, but uh, we'll, we'll see. Just look at that. It literally goes sun, sun, fall, clouds, cloud, clouds. Yeah. How can you be excited about that? I just, I just like the cold. Uh, that's, that's, that's super strange. <laughs> the time is now 628 and still to come on 18 News Today. The time has finally come. Get ready for the fourth installation of the original broadcast series, Hidden Landmarks, with host J.D. Isles, coming up soon.
now on 18 News. This is the Park Church in Elmira, New York. I'm J.D. Isles, and this is Quick History with Hidden Landmarks. New this morning, the time has come. Get ready for the fourth installation of the original broadcast series, Hidden Landmarks, with our host, J.D. Isles, coming up next. And a water main break in Pennsylvania devastates a neighborhood. More on this new story coming up. Plus, Mansfield University making strides to better aid their students on their academic journey. We'll tell you what steps they've taken. Live from your local news leader, this is 18 News Today. Good Saturday morning, Twin Tiers. I'm Alexis Bellamy. Today is September 21st. I'm Austin Evans. Thank you for joining us for 18 News Today. I'm waking up on a Saturday morning. And it's the, I think it's going to be like the last nice Saturday we have. I hope not. I mean, I'm just anticipating that September what, is going to bring what, what is, what terrible is nice? weather. What, what is nice? Because it, 80 and we up. can have, oh, 80 and up, yeah. no problem. <laughs> Probably. See, I was right. Uh, because it will be nice today and it will, nice by your definition. Next cool. Saturday, it might even be nice by my definition, you know, 30 and up. 53 degrees right now in Elmira. I'm just going to keep poking that bear the entire time I'm here. 53 degrees in Elmira right now. Calm winds. The winds have calmed down just a little bit, and visibility uh, has not improved much over the last 30 minutes. Still zero miles in Elmira, Corny, Tioga, PA, and Wellsboro for visibility. So if you're in any of those areas or in Troy or Tawanda, be careful doing Saturday morning uh, rounds as uh, the visibility is severely compromised in these areas. Temperatures across the region, 53 in Elmira, 54 in Corning, 46 in Spencer, 53 in Sarah and Tawanda. It's a very cool, calm morning across the Twin Tiers. The radar is completely clear. All that fog is well below the scans of the radar. And today we're going to warm up significantly well above average, high of 82. Uh, today uh, it's going to be after 2 p.m. Mainly clear all day today with a lot of sunshine, some passing clouds, and I'll have all the details coming up in my full forecast. I love that opening. Drum roll, please. It's time for the fourth installation of the popular Hidden Landmarks series. This weekend, our host, J.D. Isles, takes us to yet another fixture of history in the Northern Tier, Park Church. Drum roll, please. Hidden Landmarks starts now. This is the Park Church in Elmira, New York. I'm J.D. Isles, and this is Quick History with Hidden Landmarks. So as you know, one of the things that we do is explore the rich history in the Southern Tier. And Elmira, New York got an unfair share of incredible history. So this is the Park Church, and it is massive. It occupies an entire city block, and of course, it sits right next to Wisner Park. It was designed by Horatio Nelson White, and it was constructed between the years of 1874 and 1876. And it replaced the original wooden structure church that the congregation used to meet in. The design of this church is extremely eclectic, to say the least. It's borrowing from a vast array of architectural styles. But for this episode, we're really more interested in one of the things inside the church rather than the outside. The Park Church has been described as the first institutional church in America, and it truly was multi-use. When the church was built and early in its history, um, there were a vast number of things that the community could take advantage of. There were gymnasiums, there was a kitchen that cooked for the homeless, and there were a variety of parlors and public rooms that um, the public was free to use. From 1854 until his death in 1900, Thomas Kinnicutt Beecher was the pastor of Park Church. He's known for many things, but his incredible legacy is this church 
and its congregation that's extremely active to this day. This room was Reverend Beecher's study. This is where he would actually sit and write sermons. But more importantly, this was actually the first public library in the city of Elmira. And Reverend Beecher was actually loaning out his own personal book collection to anybody who wanted to have access. This door right here is how people would come in and out to borrow books. Now, this door is at 208 West Gray Street, the church's official address. Now, coming through this door to borrow a book, you would have encountered Miss Ella Wolcott. Um, she would have helped you find whatever you needed, and she was very, very active in the church and also very active when it came to literature. Uh, she ran a literary club out of the church, and also she was a bit of a Shakespeare buff. This was Elmira's public library into the Steele Memorial Library opened in 1893. And remember, these were Thomas Beecher's personal books. For anybody who has a collection of books, you realize that lending a book to someone is a very personal thing. It's almost like lending a piece of your heart. So this room really shows the love Reverend Beecher had for the people of Elmira. Everybody, I will see you next week. Thank you very much. This was Quick History with Hidden Landmarks. A massive water main break is causing huge problems in Pittsburgh this weekend. The water main broke on Friday morning and has since unindeed fried on roads and has started to flood homes. Some streets have been totally ripped apart from the rushing water. And crews have been scrambling to conduct swift water rescues, pulling people from their homes. At least two people and several animals have been rescued. And local police say power has been cut in the area because of compromised power poles. Several roads have been closed as a result of severe flooding. More than 15 schools have been closed because of the water main break. The Red Cross says the team will be deployed to help people who have been affected by the flooding. A man from the Syracuse area is dead after an explosion in the southern tier. State police say it happened around 1.30 Friday afternoon. At a speedway just, in, at just north of Interstate 81 on Front Street in Binghamton, these photos taken show how close the tank is to the road. If you take a look there, now the victim's name has not yet been released. State police say the man was working inside the tank when it exploded. No other injuries have been reported. State police say the service station was being remodeled at the same time. For more on this story as it develops, head to our website, MyTwinTears.com. A makeup artist who worked for TV host Charlie Rose for more than two decades is suing him for sexual harassment. According to court documents, Gina G. Riggi claims Rose created a toxic work environment in which women were sexually harassed, dominated, and diminished. The lawsuit has filed, was filed on Thursday in New York. It also names Bloomberg LP because Rose's show was filmed in Bloomberg Studios. CNN has reached out to Rose's attorney and representatives on Bloomberg for comment. Rose was fired from PBS and CBS News in 2017. It came a day after the Washington Post published a story about the alleged harassment. Several women told the Post they were subjected to unwanted sexual advances. At the time, Rose said he deeply apologized for the inappropriate behavior. Mansfield University decreased their cost of tuition in hopes of, to encourage higher enrollment. Not only did they decrease the cost of their tuition, but they hope to encourage other universities to do so as well. Mansfield University focuses on accessibility and affordability for both the region and the state. Our students rely upon Mansfield University as an affordable institution. And in the past year, we have reduced our tuition. We've moved towards a flat rate tuition model, which has decreased the cost of higher education by about 25% over last year. We're providing more need-based aid and more merit-based aid for our students who choose Mansfield University. The university welcomed nearly 460 first-time students, an increase of 35% over last year. Overall enrollment is up 3% and now new and returning students will also see a drop in the price of their tuition bill. 
all thanks to a revamped and cost-saving tuition model. The time is now 6.41 and still to come on 18 News Today, a protest rally held around the world, literally. People are seeking action for climate change and they're seeking it now. Check out the seasonal countdown. Two days left until fall. Halloween in 40 days and we turn the clocks back. I think that means we get an extra hour of sleep. I always get them confused in 43 days. More news and weather after the break. You're watching 18 News Today. The Justice Department says a New Jersey man is facing terrorism charges. Thursday, the DOJ charged Alexei Saab with nine counts, including conspiracy to provide material support to Hezbollah and receiving military-type training from the terror group. Investigators say Saab served as an operative of Hezbollah while living in the U.S. They believe he was helping the terrorist organization plan possible future attacks. That includes him conducting surveillance on possible locations for the group to target. Saab is also charged with trying to become a citizen unlawfully also for Hezbollah. Tens of thousands of protesters took over the streets of the Big Apple on Friday, and it's being dubbed one of the biggest day of climate demonstrations in history. Amongst the protesters, children. They say they came out to fight for their future, demanding action on climate change. Rena Roy reports. Rally cries reverberating through the streets of Lower Manhattan. We want our we want it now. As New Yorkers made their message loud and clear. I came out here today because I want there to be a future for the youth. Just to raise awareness about the problem that we're having. I just I think that was an, a really important cause and I just wanted to show up to support it. The protest held just three days before world leaders meet for the UN summit here in the city. What's the message today? The message is that the government needs to step up. Even the smallest of voices echoing their demands for big change in addressing global warming. We're here because I want to see the world. New York City public schools excused absences today, and you can see students certainly took advantage, bringing parts of New York City to a standstill. Massive crowds taking over the streets. And it just shows people that people make a difference no matter what happens, and we're trying. Their dedication to the movement even encouraging adults to join in on the more than mile long march. <laughs> Down Broadway from Foley Square to Battery Park. 
I am inspired by the kids in New York City being like, there are a million of us. We may not be able to vote, but we can grind this city to a halt to get attention on this issue. The time is now 646 and still to come on 18 News today. You are going to want to think twice before taking that water glass to the kitchen faucet for something to drink. New details on tap water have surfaced. More next. Warming up to the low 80s today. I'll have all the details on the rest of the weekend after the break. Welcome back. Still a very foggy start to the weekend. Temperatures in the lower 50s, right around 53 for Elmira. And you can see uh, downtown Elmira. Actually, you can't see downtown Elmira due to the heavy fog in the area. And temperatures across the uh, northeast region, we're in the uh, mid 50s to low 60s. 63 in New York, 54 in Syracuse, Erie. At 66 degrees, zooming into the twin tiers, however, we're in the low to mid 50s, 53 in Elmira, 54 in Corning, 47 in Spencer and Wellsboro, our two lowest temperatures on the map. And highs for today, pushing into the lower 80s, well above average for this time of year in the muggy meter, pushing into very humid for today and tomorrow. Muggy for tomorrow, a cold front is going to drop those readings down into the comfy category for midweek. Radar, we are completely clear on radar in the northeast region, zooming into the twin tiers. We see some ground clutters popping up every here and there, but it uh, remains clear, and that's the way it's going to stay all day today, with the exception of some passing upper level clouds that we're going to see this afternoon. Clouds start to build in uh, in the overnight hours and early morning hours tomorrow. Tomorrow bringing us some isolated shower chances, mainly in the afternoon. Pockets of it being uh, possibly heavy, uh, like this one in Bradford County, right around 5 o'clock. In the overnight hours into Monday, though, we clear out once again for a rather warm start to fall. 82 degrees today. Fog lifts out early with high clouds. It'll be nice and warm today uh, with plenty of sunshine and so just some passing upper level clouds. It'll be a nice day today. 61 tonight, clouds increasing in the overnight hours, of course, patchy valley fog, uh, just like we're experiencing this morning. And over the next seven days, you can see for the start of fall, 78 degrees with some isolated showers possible. A cold front drops our temperatures significantly for Tuesday. Those temperatures stay down on Wednesday. Thursday, we warm up just a little bit with some isolated, sh isolated showers once again. 
Friday, mostly cloudy with more chances of showers. It's now time for another weekend of high school football in the Twin Tiers, and we begin with a special night last night in Athens as the entire Northern Tier community came together for a great cause. Athens hosting Cannon in their gold out game for Kids Against Cancer. See the players there ready for some football, and so are we. We hop into things in the first half, and after a big fumble by Athens giving Canton this fuel position, Uriah Bailey keeping this one himself for the score. Canton trails 13-12. Then we stay on this side of the field with time ticking down in the first half. Bailey drops back the pass, but he's picked off the Athens defense with a huge stop there. Then it's Athens' turn to look for the end zone. But as they drop back the pass, and look at this, it's intercepted by who else but Bailey as he comes up with the ball. The only downside of the interception would be Canton's tough field position. Well, Bailey is just going to go 97 yards to the house, and Canton hangs on for the win in this one by a score of 27 to 19. Well, despite all the great football action happening in Athens last night, here's the reason everyone came out to the game. Oriah Cook and Seely Carlin, they were the beneficiaries of last night's game as they continued their fights with cancer. Everyone from the players to the cheerleaders were supporting the gold colors and there was even a beautiful moment of silence followed up by a releasing of gold balloons into the night sky in support of all kids fighting this horrible disease. We met up with cancer survivor and Canton football star Timmy Ward and talked to him about what it means to him to be involved with such a great cause on a very special night in Athens. I can't even explain how I feel about this. It's so awesome that like we're, you can't put words into it. And um, these kids are going through something that no one should ever have to go through. And to see all these people coming out here and actually supporting them, even though they don't know what it's like to go through this, but even but they're still here because they know that these kids are in the battle of their lives and they're just trying to grind every day and just get through it. To New York Corning trying to start the season 3-0 on the road against Binghamton. Mid-third quarter, fourth down for Binghamton. Sequan Johnson finds Colby Young. What a catch there. The Patriots get to within 42-21. to However, in the fourth quarter now, Corning driving and Joe Ott gets the Hawks right on the Binghamton doorstep with that 10-yard run. Then Dylan Kennedy pounds his way into the end zone from a yard out. Corning moves to 3-0 on the season with a 48-21 road win over Binghamton. Waverly made the trip down the main end well, opening drive of the game, and Emmy looking at a second goal at the one and Nick DeLucia calls his own number for the score. Spartans jump out to an early 7-0 lead, but Waverly with the quick response. Their first drive and David Hallett bounces off a defender and rolls his way into the end zone. The Wolverines answer and we're tied at 7. Very next drive for ME though and it's DeLucia again making his way into the end zone, this time from six yards out to put the Spartans up 14 to seven. Maine Endwell goes on to defeat Waverly by a score of 47 to 27. The Seneca Indians hosting Windsor at Watkins Glen High School. Windsor up 20 to seven in the third. On third and short, it's Ethan Reed on the quarterback keeper, and he picks up a first down for the Black Knights, but they would be forced to punt on the ensuing drive. The Indians getting tricky. Owen Schultesack on the reverse and he finds a big hole and he picks up a big game for the Indians. A couple of plays later, Trayvon Jones on the carry and he is going to take it eight yards for the touchdown. The Seneca Indians would cut the lead to six, but Windsor hangs on for a 20 to 14 win. And that'll do it for a look at sports this morning. 418 Sports, I'm Chuck Brain. You may want to think twice about filling your glass from the sink. There may be cancer-causing products in tap water. That's according to a new report from the Environmental Working Group. Researchers say they found 22 carcinogens, including arsenic, uranium, and radium, in tap water. 
The watchdog group says there may be a health risk even though most tap water meets the legal standards put in place by the federal government. The study was published Thursday in the journal Halion. Anyone heading out to the Corn and Harvest Festival should expect a very nice day with plenty of sunshine today. Highs in the low 80s and that will last through the entire festival. I'll have one more look at the upcoming week after the break. You're watching 18 News Today. Welcome back. Before we go, Austin's going to remind us that we do have one last day left of beautiful weather before fall gets here and that we can be on the lookout for more sunshine, right? Yeah, we can see. We'll see some more sunshine going through this week, and it's going to be a really nice end to the summer, but we are halfway through September. You know what that means? No. Hockey season is on the way. A high of 82 today with some high clouds passing. Bye. You can see some isolated showers are possible tomorrow with an even warmer temperature in the mid-80s. Fall starts off warmer than average with a high of 78 with some isolated showers possible as well. But a cold front drops those temperatures significantly. We'll be lucky to see 70 on Tuesday. And going into the week, it's going to be we're going to see some clouds, maybe some sunshine, maybe some... Uh, teardrops, but it'll be it'll be a nice week after Tuesday. So mix and match. I yeah, didn't hear you say much. anything about sunshine, just raining clouds, but that's okay. Well, well, no, I'll forgive you. you. Saw sunshine I did. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I won't hold it against you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us at WTM 18 News today. The Today Show is next. Have a good one.